Seven figure men do go for me. Honey, how would you know that? You're not a seven figure man. Again, all of these men and these pick Misha's, pick me women in my comment sections, you guys haven't even like been in the same room as seven figure men. You haven't been anywhere near the vicinity. You're watching TV and you're getting your information from there. I'm telling you in real life and reality, not delusion, reality, I date seven figure men. I date six figure men. That is a reality. What you guys are saying that seven figure men don't go for women that look like me, you wouldn't know that because you don't date them. She's probably telling the truth, but getting smashed by a seven figure dude without him putting a ring on it is what he calls dating. <laughs> Think about that. So are you really dating him? I had this thought like, wow, it's just so many beautiful, educated, black women in atlanta like what the heck am i doing here like the pickings are too wide it's not enough men out here like no wonder why i'm single because there's literally so many women they can have a different these men or women whatever you whatever you like i like men so these men could literally have a different bed a different nice woman every day like which states are the men in where y'all at where black men brown men shit white men blue men i travel to atlanta quite often and the main thing that i've noticed at all times is number one why are there so many beautiful women here so many beautiful women who are well off who have a lot of money and where are the dudes now i'm not looking for the dudes like that but it's, it's evident. It's like 80% beautiful women, 20% just random guys. I have a homie that I grew up with, and you know, you know, I'm from the DMV, and I travel you know, a lot, and I go to Atlanta. I brought him to Atlanta. I said, I want you to see what Atlanta's like. He's like, all right. And he, I don't like Atlanta. He said, I don't like Atlanta. I don't have no desire to go there. I said, bro, just, just, just hear me out. Just, just check it out. So I took him to Atlanta. We went to a few spots. Went to a few restaurants and things like that. Went to this place like Dave and Buster's where, you know, you get to play like games and stuff like that. And every single where he went, every single where we went, he was impressed at the fact that the majority of females, I mean, the majority of places we were was predominantly black women who were beautiful. He could not understand that. Available. Where are the men? There was no men. Like for as a guy in the dating market, I'm married. He's not. As a guy in the dating market, it's wide open. To the point where me and my boy, we went to this place like Dave and Buster's. We went to go play some basketball game and two females came and hollered at us. I really think they was hollering at him. I don't think they was hollering at me, to be honest. But two females came and hollered at us. That's how many women out in Atlanta are thirsty. They they, 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 ain't, they, ain't, they ain't got, there ain't no men around. And then a lot of the men, you know, don't like women. <laughs> They're not attracted to women, so you got that too. So it just leaves... It just leaves that lane just, it's just a whole bunch of opportunity for single men, to be honest. You know what I mean? Watch a video together and then chat about it. When I feel like I was a good mom and did everything I can to show my kids I loved them and be there for them. And why does this generation of kids just turn their back on their parents? Like I would never treat my parents the way some of the things have been said to me um, from my kids. And... I don't understand it. And it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. My friends, patients that I see at work, you know, story after story after story after, you know, my daughter doesn't talk to me. My son doesn't talk to me. Like, just so much entitlement these days. And it's just so flipping heartbreaking. Like, it was so much easier when the kids were little. Like, I just didn't think that my life would be where it's at at 50. I love my kids. But why is it this hard? You know, it might be time to look in the mirror. Like, if both of your kids aren't talking to you, I'm not saying it's you, because sometimes people are the way they are. But you might want to take a look in the mirror. Maybe you're not a pleasant person to be around. I'm just saying, like, both your kids don't want nothing to do with you. Both your adult children don't want nothing to do with you. Why, where's the respect at for parents and appreciation for all they've done for you your entire life? Like, I don't get it concept of no contact has been going around a lot lately and so I want to answer this question genuinely as a therapist who sees a lot of clients who have got no contact. I think one of the largest things to recognize as a parent of an adult child is generational differences. So for starters, people who are in their 50s, 60s plus who have adult children 
grew up in a generation where it was very common for children to be seen, not heard, and respect equated to just acquiescing to whatever your parents kind of wanted. Respect often meant you didn't have boundaries. Whereas mental health now is and continues to be a large conversation. Relationships with family members are one of the only relationships in which people are encouraged to make amends with people who have been abusive towards them, who have manipulated them, who consistently cross their boundaries, etc. And as a therapist, what I often hear in these situations is that from the child's perspective, there's been multiple attempts to repair the relationship, to explain the behaviors that are hurtful and harmful, yet the behaviors continue. Or there just isn't the safety or the space to have that discussion in the first place. Another thing is that in terms of gratitude for the parent taking care of them or just, you know, creating them, I think that is often seen to be synonymous with I will have a relationship with you forever. Someone can be grateful for their life, for their parents, for the efforts that have been made, but also decide that a relationship is not for them. And that isn't to take away from the fact that I imagine that it's very hurtful for parents. And at the same time, what also exists is that it's hurtful typically for the child to go no contact as well. But while it's typically hurtful for the child to make that decision, it's also often safer from their perspective to make that decision. I think it's important to come to these conversations with the sense that you are not entitled to a relationship with your child just because you birthed them. It is something that you have to earn and continuously work at. Place. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. This is something that I think about actually often. I talk to people about this all the time. I notice that people from, you know, their community yeah, I don't want to say certain words, but people from their community, because I'm my community, we have family reunions, we're very connected and stuff. We have our own issues too. But I noticed that people from her community, uh, they have the mother and the father in the household, they raise their children, and I noticed that they usually always forget about their parents. And then when their kids grow up, they don't want nothing to do with the parents. That's that's like a that's a normal thing with that with that with that culture, with that community. And I don't have the answer to it. Don't understand why. I don't know. It's like they forget about their parents and they go raise their own family. Like they grow up, they leave their parents, marry some woman or marry some man, have their own children, invest all their time into their children and everything like that while forgetting their parents. And then when their children grow up, they repeat the same cycle. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they, maybe they're just repeating what they what they saw. It's hard for me to imagine not having a relationship with my parents, but I will say this: if my parents were very difficult, unreasonable, didn't care about me, or I, I felt they didn't care about uh, my opinions and things like that, because when, once you become an adult, the relationship between your parent and you change. It's a lot different, actually. The dynamic is different. The problem is a lot of times the parent still sees you as a child when you're an adult and they don't respect you as an adult and it's a quite a transition for them. I went through that with my mother. She was still at times treating me like a little boy, talking to me crazy in front of other people and I'm a man. I felt disrespected. You know what I'm saying? And I had conversations with her and she corrected it and it's time she almost went back to that and I was like, hey, listen, my all due respect, I'm a man now. You can't, one thing you don't do is you don't disrespect a man. I mean, you don't disrespect a man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I am your son. But I am also now a man. And if you disrespect me, then my next action is to just distance myself from you and talk to you, you know, not as often. You know what I mean? And it might be hurtful to her, but it's just like at the end of the day, like the child wants peace. You know, you grow up your whole entire life. Your parents telling you what to do and stuff like that. Now you're at an age where you don't have to listen to them. It's, it's really like it's really an option now. And if you if you're not a pleasant parent adult, that that child that's now an adult is going to take the option of peace and not being told what to do and being and nagging and all type of things. That's what they're usually going to do. 